So today I'm talking about a book entitled The Whisper Man by Alex North. Uh, quite a chilling thriller. So uh, stick around to hear what I thought of it. Well, hey everybody, Roger here and welcome to my channel, Rogers Reads. So today I am talking about The Whisper Man. Now, this was actually uh, the Book of the Month Club selection for this month. Well, I actually got three of them, but, but yeah, this was uh, one of the books how they offered. And when I read the synopsis, it sounded really intriguing, so I snatched it up right away. And actually, I was so excited to read it that I, read, I started reading it the day that I received it in the mail. And uh, pretty much read it in uh, two sittings. So, okay, I was hooked from the very first page. And let me read you a couple of lines. So this is a father writing to his son. I need to start with an apology because over the years I told you many times that there's no such thing as monsters. I'm sorry that I lied. And that's just on the first page. So that sucked me in right away. So the story takes place in the town of Featherback, which has quite a gruesome past. 20 years ago, a serial killer dubbed the Whisper Man abducted and murdered five young boys. He was so named because each of the victims reported hearing whispering outside of their bedroom window at night before they uh, finally disappeared. Well, it's back in So eventually caught by Detective Peter Willis after the fifth murder, the Whisper Man, whose real name is uh, Frank Carter, is now locked away in prison. So fast forward to the present day, Neil Spencer, a six-year-old boy, has been abducted from his home. And the kicker is, is that the crime bears a shocking resemblance to the Whisper Man's crimes of so long ago. So still haunted by Carter's grisly uh, murders, Detective Inspector Willis, uh, Peter Willis, has always suspected that the murderer may have had an accomplice, but could never prove anything. He, it was always in the back of his mind, but uh, there, were, there was never any evidence to support that theory. Now Willis can't help but wonder whether the old crimes and this new one are somehow related or uh, perhaps were committed by the same person. So the story also revolves around Tom Kennedy, a grieving widower, and his seven-year-old son, Jake, who have recently moved into town and into a new house. So shortly after they move in, weird things begin to happen. Uh, Jake begins to act up in odd ways and then claims to hear whispering outside of his window. What's back in Oh, and Jake has an imaginary friend who tells them details about the Whisper Man that only police know, as we learn later on in the book. Now, Tom, Jake's father, of course, is beside himself. And it's evident that the two of them have kind of an uncomfortable relationship. And, you know, we're keeping in mind that they're both grieving here as well. So, but from Tom's point of view, how do you relate to your son when he talks to people who aren't really there. Or maybe they are there. Who knows? Now what's interesting also about this story is that it's told from the point of view of several characters. So there's Jake, Tom, Peter, uh, the detective, and another detective on the case as well, uh, Amanda Beck. Now, being privy to their thoughts, we can't help but experience and be moved by the intense human element of this story, especially sur surrounding the uh, dysfunctional relationships between fathers and their sons, which play a huge role in this story. You know, I especially enjoyed being in Jake's head as I found him to be quite a mysterious, precocious, and a fascinating little boy. And then of course, there's Peter, the broken detective who's full of regret who, uh, who was the one who put the serial killer behind bars. And lastly, given the nature of the story, uh, murders of young children and the uh, loss of Tom's wife and Jake's mother, 
there's also a powerful element of grief, which, uh, which really ended up wrenching in my heart in certain places. But I felt that all of these different character perspectives of the events in Featherback really added to the richness and uh, added an extra depth to the story, creating a genuinely well-rounded tale. And the author did an excellent job of ratcheting up the tension in the story, especially once those characters uh, whom we've come to, to, to really care about fall in danger. Now, I will say that though this book is really eerie and downright terrifying, it isn't gory, for which I was appreciative, given that all the victims in the story were, were, were small children. But still, just the whole situation of the abducted children by a potential serial killer is more than enough to create an unbelievable amount of, of tension and anxiety and get the heart pounding. And of course, then there is the utterly chilling villain. Now, this is the kind of villain that gives you nightmares and, and has you double-checking and triple-checking the locks on your doors and windows over and over again. So in this way, The Whisper Man is an intense heart in your throat psychological thriller that had kind of a sixth sense vibe to it as well and a, a huge creep factor. The short chapters helped to increase the uh, heart-pounding pacing of the story and added a, a feeling of urgency to it as well. So this is really a terrifying, dark, and twisty story that fills you with an ever-growing sense of dread and menace as you turn each page. Uh, it's definitely the, the, one of the most unsettling books that I've read in a while. And one thing that I did find a little odd is that the author switched back and forth from first-person point of view and third-person point of view. I think, if I remember correctly, most of the times uh, they used third-person, but every now and then, and especially when it was Jake's, if I recall correctly, uh, we got first-person point of view, which kind of yanked me out of the story a bit, and I thought, oh, this is kind of strange. So I'm not really sure what the uh, stylistic reason for that was. But, point of view aside, I thought this book was flawless. It's an engrossing, creepy, and uh, captivating read with fantastic, well-fleshed-out characters, uh, intricate world-building, and excellent pacing that just may be my favorite book of 2019. I also enjoyed... Well, I don't know if I enjoyed it is the word. I also appreciated how the book dealt with trauma and grief and illustrated how those emotions can affect our actions and our choices. So all in all, a really excellent book, in my humble opinion. And for me, this was a solid five-star read. So that is my little chat about The Whisper Man, which I forgot to hold up during, during the entire video. Oh, well. So as always, I thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all, you, all of your support. And if you like this video, I appreciate if you click the uh, like button below as that really helps my channel out. So uh, that about does it. I will talk to you all in the next video. Roger and out. Ooh.